very much, um, Dr. Ntebi. Um, to close out the conference session now, um, uh, Adam Tarsi, the uh, Chief of Staff of the Combating Terrorism Technology Support Office. You need to add a few more words to that name. It's, it's kind of short. Um, and Dov Oster, the uh, um, Chief Scientist of the uh, um, Ministry of the Israel Ministry of Defense uh, uh, Research and Development Directorate will say a few a few words. Um, now the only problem is one of these mics works and none of us really know. Oh, really? That's right. Linky Dom, maybe we can. Uh, yes, is this the one that works? Yeah. These guys. So we set uh, Adam and Dov up with a couple of questions, essentially can summarize one of them as what would you like to see as the contestants a few years from now? What do you see the, the big trends in both terrorism and com combating terrorism technology being? And secondly, some tips to the entrepreneurs in the, in the audience as to how to best work with, with uh, your two organizations. So, I don't know who wants to start, but... Uh, okay, yeah, right. Okay. Adam's uh, going to do it in Hebrew, I think, right. no? Uh, okay, well, again, my name is Adam Tarsi. Uh, my organization is the Combating Terrorism Technical Support Office. Uh, so, the objective of our office is to, at a very basic level, talk to operators, find out what their capability gaps are, what they're not able to do as well in the field as they'd like to. And we ask that body of interagency operators, everybody in the U.S. that has a mission to combat terrorism, we ask them to self-prioritize those needs at the working level. Wasn't working. Can you hear? Uh, so that body of, of interagency users determines the things that they most need as a community. Now, they're, they're by like interest areas, so the ChemBio guys all sit together and the uh, surveillance and intel guys sit together. But uh, by group, they determine what needs they've got. And then we go out as an organization, CTTSO, and try to find solutions to solve their problems as rapidly as possible. So we're in the rapid prototyping space. So I'm looking at 12 to 24 months what we can deliver and hand back to that customer, to that operator, before they rotate onto a next job or before that, that mission, that objective is no longer relevant. Uh, so that's the, the, the kind of gist of what we're doing. Uh, <clears throat> interest areas, well, we, we've got the entire gamut of combating terrorism needs. Uh, and I won't belabor all the possible uh, issues. But things that, that we've really evolved to are prevalent today in what you've heard. Advanced analytics. Trying to provide operators on the ground with as much knowledge as we can. We had an operator, uh, well, it's going back maybe 10 or 12 years ago. For my, the early part of my career, we had provided as much ISR as possible. It was always give me more ISR. I need more eyes. I need more eyes. And this, uh, this particular SEAL came to us and said, I've got more information than I can possibly manage. I need analytics. I need the ability to make sense out of this information. That was sort of a light bulb for us, and, and things began to evolve to the point where advanced analytics and tactical analytics specifically are some of our most important uh, program objectives. Uh, then there are a whole host of technical areas that we've just not been able to solve, like standoff explosives detection, uh, even true anomaly detection in wide fields of view. So how can I, uh, at standoff distances, understand what's changed in my environment um, or, or where the, uh, the threat is? Those are kind of the major issues. Then there are a whole host of things that are, uh, are longer term, uh, the impact of, of biological weapons, chemical weapons, things like that. And then there are things that never go away, uh, physical security, cyber security, things that we're going to face today, tomorrow, 10 years from now. So that's just kind of a rough scheme. I think after four and a half hours of reviewing uh, the, the uh, fantastic submissions and delving into some of the detailed questions, um, I'm kind of in that rhythm. So I'll turn it over to Doobie. And then I'd like to hear what questions you have. Uh, why is it such a challenge to work with the US government, maybe? And what can you do uh, to improve your chances? 
um, I don't know, whatever might come to mind so that you get a chance to participate in this and, and gain value for, for your interests. Okay. My name is uh, Dobo Dubi Oster. I'm the CTO of the DDR in Roma Park. First, uh, I would uh, like to uh, start with thanks to the organizers, namely uh, Edon uh, of the MIT Forum and the uh, uh, And of course, to our uh, Partner in Mapad, uh, which is the Amir. Find out with them uh, how we can apply uh, their ideas into the system. Uh, regarding, uh, regarding this, I mean the whole scenario of uh, startups, uh, I believe that. Uh, for all the startups, which means that uh, you can create something uh, and disrupt, disrupt or destruct <coughs> the, the, old, the old solutions. That's what we are looking into uh, when we are looking into startups, is uh, find something that will disrupt, change the equation and maybe break the circle Another thing that startup give or bring to the table is the competition. We are in a small country, so uh, the competition between the known and big uh, defense companies are weak. Uh, and uh, you are, the startup brings a lot of uh, energy and uh, inform, new information and new capability into the table. And of course, speed, which uh, normally, especially bureaucratic or governmental uh, uh, organization, are very slow. And also, big companies are slow in uh, adopting new uh, technologies. And as we saw uh, today in all the finalists, all, all of them have uh, used uh, existing ID, existing technology, and made a new solution, uh, and it was, uh, this is what we are looking into it, and we, it's very hard to get from a very established uh, organization or companies. Um, regarding the direction of uh, or terrorism, I think uh, normally it's hard to predict uh, where we are going. When every, every, everyone that makes a prediction normally is counting on the short memory of his audience. So I will uh, give you the, the uh, assumption that you are not uh, short memory, that you don't have short memory, so I will not make predictions of what is going to be, but I just can say that we are interested in what uh, direction we are interested in. On one side is the, let's say, psychology, which means uh, we want to bring a person or a soldier to, to the enemy territory uh, in order to uh, terrify, if you can say, the other side, or terror the other side, 
So we have to uh, make ways how to bring our uh, forces into the, uh, to the location with uh, minimal uh, casualties and uh, maximum uh, efficiency. Uh, the other way is uh, uh, to take all the personnel out of the conflict area and use robots. Uh, so all this kind of uh, solution in, in the finalist uh, examples. And uh, I think that uh, this uh, play between these two trends, how, how can bring the soldier to the place without harming him, or how can I replace the soldier with the robot, that's are the two directions that we are looking into it. Of course, uh, some combination is also possible. The other direction, uh, as I see it, is uh, how you can use the crowd or control the crowds, how you can measure uh, the sentiment of the crowds, how you can influence it uh, in order to uh, make the, you know, give the terror less, less opportunities. This is one of the new capabilities that the internet mass media give us and we are still not uh, using it, uh, it's not efficiently. So we are looking into such, such uh, ideas. And of course, I will be glad to hear questions regarding how we and Mafat are uh, dealing with new ideas, new companies, what we can give and what we want to take. Thank you. If you have any questions. As was mentioned, we know today that it's uh, pretty easy to produce information. Uh, the problem is the analytics. Uh, the, there are a lot of ways how to produce analytics or relevant analytics automatically without using uh, too much personnel. Today, we, are, as everyone knows, we have a lot of uh, Images or images or movies that we are not doing anything with it. Everyone in Israel saw that uh, when you have a security camera, let's say in Jerusalem, for example, after the event you can see and, uh, and understand that the camera saw everything that is going to happen, but no one was there to uh, to see it before. So if if uh, some kind of uh, agent, as you call it, can do it for us and uh, give us uh, alert. When you have in, let's say, in the old city, they have, I think, 2,000 cameras like this. So everything is, is photographed but, uh, or imaged. But you, don't, you cannot do anything with it if you don't have any analytics, especially in real times. So this is uh, special. No uh, question there will be with us at least for a few years from now, because I think that uh, the information is growing exponentially and the capability to analyze it like human would like is not growing as much, even with uh, the, the prediction of Kurzweil that we will have uh, artificial intelligence, super <coughs> artificial intelligence in uh, 10 years. Not everyone agree with him, so I think we will still have a walk. So this is one uh, one issue. The other one I mentioned also before is uh, how you can uh, understand the crowd, how you can uh, influence it. Uh, we know, we, at least we think that we ISIS, for example, are doing great job of. Uh, influencing their uh, crowd, 
I don't know if that's this great because the percentage that they are successful to, uh, to uh, use is, is pretty low, but still they are using the mass media much better than uh, our government or uh, agencies are doing. And we would like to uh, change this, uh, to influence the crowd. Uh, first of all, measure it. Know when uh, the mood is uh, changing more and uh, have an alert before it so you can react to the population and solve their problem before it becomes a terror. I think it could, could be done and this is uh, one of the thing is more psychology, maybe uh, statistic and psychology, and uh, this is another area that will be, I believe, will be developed much more than uh, what we have today. Three years? I would say, I would say, uh, machine learning and uh, deep neural networks. Uh, I, I think that there's there's too many applications. Uh, where that is useful and so much work in the environment that uh, I think the, the three-year horizon, those will be the breakthroughs, those will be the, the uh, companies that are winning, that are getting startup funding, <clears throat> are finding ways to uh, uh, help the machines to do a better job of, of learning how to make decisions faster uh, in piles of data that we just can't get through as individuals. Maybe you can uh, explain a little bit more what what you are, what you mean. You, using the mobile. Uh, so you you are you ask, you are assumption is that we everyone carry a mobile. I know of a few companies that uh, use mobile uh, as the counter-terrorism, uh, uh, not just only to find the, the suspect or the terrorist, but uh, also to as an intelligence tool. Uh, but I think that uh, it's very easy to get rid of it. If someone knows that this is the way you are going to allocate him, so it's very easy to get rid of it. So I don't see the... I understand that everyone else in the crowd or in the neighborhood would 
carry the mobile so you can use this. And there are a few companies that try to use uh, even uh, uncooperating uh, un uh, uh, mobile devices in order to find a solution. But the terrorist itself, I don't think we can count on, on him collaborating with us. I would say, uh, yes, it's a signature. And there are a host of different signatures to the extent that we can illuminate them and tie them to an individual and determine that, that that's the guy that we're looking for. Well, certainly that is another, uh, another vector for uh, prevention, of course, is, is wonderful. That implies a whole host of things. Uh, forensically, sure. Would you like solution like that? Would you like to play? Uh, uh, yeah, of course. Anything that, that identifies a signature and ties it to an individual uh, is a useful tool. Sir. Soldier still using the equipment over, you know, post Vietnam. Uh, from your experience with American military systems, pre establishment, and also uh, build what you see going on here, what's going to be enough to bring a lot of these solutions down to you know, the soldier entry level? You know, where active enough is easy. Yeah, Gabe, you're right. It's uh, <clears throat> very often systems will start at the expert level. Uh, they'll only be useful for uh, a PhD, uh, intelligence analyst back home. And the constant push is to drive it down to the tactical edge so that the operator in the field can do it. Sometimes that is uh, reducing the noise that it has so often. Maybe that guy doesn't need 45 functions. You know, Excel can do 12 million things, but you use six on a daily basis. So can I just provide those six things to the guy in the field? Can I deliver him just in time intelligence or information, just what he needs to be able to do his job a little better. Can we simplify it, right? One of the geniuses of iPhone is it doesn't come with instructions, it doesn't come with buttons, you don't need to know anything, it's intuitive. To the extent that we can develop solutions that are intuitive to the generation of soldiers or, or first responders that we're working with, that's where, that's where successful transitions happen. And that's something that we try to impress upon the developers as well. Uh, who are you? Who is your anticipated user? What's your concept of operation? How is this operator going to employ the solution in the field? You need to, to consider the, the form, the fit, the function, and what he's going to do with it, the user interface. Um, and the, the, I wouldn't want to say education level, but, but what can that guy handle at that moment, Whether regardless of how smart or how educated he is? What can he process? So you're right on the money, but there's no stock answer for how to go about it. Each one is different, and many things just aren't appropriate to hand to a soldier uh, in a platoon. They're at a different echelon or at a different for a different problem set. Right. Well, I mean, obviously, every situation is different. Technology or whatever that. But I'm curious more about the general public. Like, you know, what are Well, first, uh, I think you are right. I mean, the part of the equipment is uh, old. Uh, the problem is not the technology. Is uh, like I said before, the organization and money is also all, always an issue. But, uh, big organization have take time to uh, adjust, and the technology is moving much faster. So. I think the solution is to use uh, personal uh, part of the technology that everyone carry with him. Today they are, uh, they are asking the soldier to leave it outside, the mobile I think I'm talking about. But I think in a few uh, years there will be no such, I mean, they cannot be separated, the person and the, the mobile. So you, you should try to uh, use this uh, very advanced piece of equipment that everyone carries in his pocket in order to make him much more uh, technology-oriented uh, uh, soldier. That's, that's the idea. So, uh, for example, it, you can use it for communication, you can use it. Today, even uh, part of the soldiers don't have uh, electronic communication. They are just shouting. 
course, you can use it uh, for communication, for imaging, for measuring uh, uh, your uh, health status, and so on and so on. And uh, by this, uh, maybe give a jump to the capability of, uh, of the soldier. So that's why I'm saying it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring your own device. That's uh, right now. It's a problem regarding uh, security, but uh, at the end, uh, like everyone else, the, or everything else, uh, you uh, will you want to compromise, or you are willing to compromise security if if the function that you can get is much more. Uh, more valuable than security. So I think we are very close to that. You can get maps, you can get uh, location, uh, whatever you want uh, is inside your uh, your mobile. So it's just a problem how you can secure it a little bit. And you are you can have a jump without any effort. This will be the question. Uh, it's, this is the obvious philosophical dilemma. It, uh, we don't want to take the human out of the loop. Uh, where is the computer better at making the recommendation? What factors are included? Uh, is there enough trust between you and the system that you think it's, uh, that, that it understands uh, enough of the parameters to be able to make that decision better than you can? That day is not likely to come. Uh, there will always be a role for individuals. That's why you have you know, intuition. That's why you've got experiences that are so hard to define. That's why uh, the, the machine learning and the, the deep neural networks are such a challenge because you just can't recreate. There are some things that the computer can do more efficiently already. Um, how do we push that and where is the marriage? Where's the intersection? I, I can't answer that, but that's the policy discussion, uh, the, the philosophical discussion that will take place today, tomorrow, and 50 years from now. I think we are already there. Part of the system are now, uh, the, the operator is just giving the general uh, rules of engagement. That on React, if you take uh, Iron Dome, for example, uh, the time that you, are, you have to react, a person or a, a man cannot do it. So the system must react by its own if you want it to be effective. So the, the person just give, uh, you know, he has the red button, he can stop the, the sketch, the, the process, and start it, but it cannot really be part of the of the whole uh, of the whole scenario. How uh, deep we are going to use the computer to, uh, to do it? It's uh, hard to tell how fast it will be done, but uh, it will be there. And then, of course, like everything else, then uh, as you see in the movies, movies, then the AI is. Uh, winning everything, but then, of course, the ingenuity of, uh, of our species <laughs> is uh, at the end as some kind of a twist that you can uh, use it. So I think for a general purpose or known uh, uh, rules of engagement, system will replace person or people, and it's already in the beginning.
Well, while you're thinking about it, I'll follow on to what Doobie uh, just said. Something occurred to me. Uh, if, if machines and analytics could accurately predict, then people would be beating the stock market on a consistent basis. And there's a, a theory called random walk theory in stock price valuation, which means you can incorporate every bit of known information and there is some aspect of a stock price that you simply can't predict because of unknown factors. Uh, that's the reason that you'll always have individuals, I think, involved in this process. You just can't get away from it regardless of the strength of the analytics entirely. But I think uh, that still the prediction of, uh, of the algorithm, as you mentioned, is uh, uh, the prediction of the algorithm is today, in most cases, is better than the person if if there is any any way to predict. If it's just a random number uh, guessing, then every, everyone is, is yeah, the, in the same scenario. That's the argument. Is there any way? To but as, as you see, for for example, you mentioned that stock exchange uh, they are moving to uh, algorithm trading. Because the, yep. it's make uh, more sense and uh, the, the performance of this. Now, of course, there are competing algorithms now. So that's, uh, I think, will be the war of robots. You have to write it based on some set of rules. And if you put two economists in a room, you get three opinions. <laughs> so, you know, it's hard to, it's, it's just hard to do. Okay, one more. Uh, I think you got the floor. The program manager. <laughs> I think this is uh, maybe one of the advantages of computers. Don't have anyone to blame. Bill Gates. We always blame Bill Gates. Yeah. <laughs> throw a softball Gideon you're trying to stall for time help me tell a story when I was eight years old uh, <laughs> That's not a softball. I thought it was going to. U.S. government, any government, is a is an extremely hard market to break into for a lot of a lot of some strong reasons, and then some uh, bureaucratic, uh, conceivably unnecessary reasons that we make it more difficult than it needs to be. Uh, you know, if if I were a cash flow business, um, the the government is not a great place to start as a market. We you all know that already. Uh, we're a great secondary market. Once you've established, we're, we're an outstanding volume uh, partner and we can provide you access to operators that are difficult to do anywhere else. Uh, but it's hard to generate cash flow on a near-term basis to get a business off the ground when you've been bootstrapping it for a few months and you're waiting for a government contract to come through. Uh, I, man, I wish I had a good answer for that. We do... Um, our federal acquisition regulations, uh, while most people uh, bemoan them and... and criticize their inflexibility, there, there's enough room in there for us to be able to accept risk, award contracts, and, uh, and research and develop and deliver capabilities much more rapidly than we do. Um, our problem is cultural. We are risk averse in the government because we're protecting your resources, your dollars. Uh, and so we don't shift very rapidly for innovative technology. Um, in some sense, that's, that's a very useful thing for you to keep in mind as you pay taxes. Uh, in other senses, it's just not an effective way to introduce innovation into uh, a, a big machine like, say, the U.S. Army. Uh, <clears throat> my recommendation would be to find dual 
uh, verticals to find multiple customer paths and to look for opportunities for uh, R&D partnership. Uh, so the U.S. government is good about trying to find cooperative research and development agreements and rapid acquisition tools uh, to be able to bring innovative ideas into the R&D space. It's the procurement lane that lags behind it. So as you're identifying uh, other markets, we can help with the R&D and we can help work toward a longer term procurement if it makes sense, while you're also generating cash flow for um, secondary, law enforcement, uh, maybe commercial markets. Probably not exactly the answer you're hoping to hear. It's as realistic as I can provide it, though. Well, <clears throat> we are almost in the same, uh, same situation. Uh, it's easier for us to help in uh, R&D. Uh, we are trying to uh, encourage, uh, like I said before, s small companies, uh, startups to uh, approach us and uh, we will try to uh, help in uh, moving the R&D effort forward, if it's, of course, if it's uh, something interesting. Uh, but we cannot guarantee at the end, we cannot guarantee the, uh, let's say, the, ac the, ac the acquisition uh, is not something that we can guarantee in, in, uh, before it. It's very complicated. You cannot uh, predict. It's almost a random number. Uh, what will happen? Because time flies by, people change, uh, the scenario change. So you, it's very hard to predict if someone, even if you see it very relevant now, maybe four years from now it will not be relevant and no one will buy it. And so that's before the, the uh, winners are announced, that's a pretty good segue. Uh, we recognize that this is a limitation and we try to engage in fora like this where we can illuminate startups and recognize the contributions that you're making and provide you not just a little bit of press, but hopefully some venture capital, uh, give you opportunities to get those revenue streams to get off the ground so that you can stabilize, that you can progress while our system is, is trying to uh, find ways to, to embrace you. Uh, so I hope that the things that we try to do with Silicon Valley, the things that we're doing here, uh, the broad agency announcements that we look to put in place, the prizes and, and the challenges, the uh, things like Innocentive and crowdsource platforms, they all give you opportunities to put your hand up and say, I've got something here that you should see and try to stand out from the noise. Uh, Gideon, you uh, ready to, ready to? Un yeah, it's, uh, it's a first thank you. Thank you both very much. Still, still looking forward to hearing what happened when you were at your...